So, Genesis chapter 1. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for um, another opportunity to come before your presence, to sit at your feet, and to study your word. We say, may your name be praised, may your name be exalted. As we read the scriptures this morning, we, we ask that you open our eyes, you give us understanding, and share with us, teach us what you have us learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. So Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the night day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creeped upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 
and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given the green herb for meat, and it, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. So starting from the beginning, the very first verse of the Bible says, in the beginning, God. It lets us know that we we put God at the beginning of our lives. So, so for instance, right, let's say that someone is starting a relationship. The typical thing is that people put God in the middle of the relationship, not at the beginning. So let's say that I see a lady that I like, right? When I see her, I, I, I will not pray and ask the Lord what he thinks, if I should start the relationship or not. I will just approach her in my understanding and start the dating process. Then I try to squeeze God in, in the middle, maybe when it's now ver- getting very close to marriage, and I'll try to come and make God bless it. But it should not be so. The Bible says, in the beginning, God. So somebody wants to relocate, right? He will not put God in the beginning. So, okay, God, I want to relocate. What do you think? Is this your will? Will you bless and prosper this? He will He will first resign his job. He can sell all his property. He can apply for jobs abroad. Go through all the processes. Then maybe when it's time for visa, he will now go to God and say, God, please make sure I have a visa. Please bless this visa. As I go for this visa interview process, let it be blessed. But the Bible says, in the beginning, God. It also says, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So sometimes we seek God, but we actually don't seek him first. He's not the first thing on our mind. He's not He's not priority, right? People don't, God, the things of God are not on their front burner. They can do all other things, then they put God somewhere else. But the Bible says in the beginning, God is the first book and is the first line in the Bible. So it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In chapter in chapter 1, verse 2, the very next verse, it now says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So, how can a perfect God, a God who is excellent, create something that is without form and void have you ever have you ever thought about it that the god who we read that when he did something it was good when he did another thing it was good when he did this one it was good when he finished it was very good how is it possible that god made something and it was without form and void it was the Bible, that word in Hebrew, it means to be shapeless. It means to be like a, like a wasteland, to be desolate. So how can God create something? And then he fills it with darkness and water. So the Bible says, and darkness was on the face of the deep, right? And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the only thing that was on the earth 
was darkness and water that was all there was nothing even the sun was not there the stars were not there right nothing no moon nothing at all just darkness and water so why would god create the earth and just make everywhere dark and fill it with water then his spirit is just moving on on top of the water the question is the answer to that question is that's not how god created the earth so in between genesis 1 and genesis 2 something happened that made the earth to be without form without void to be dark and to be filled with water so let me just read one scripture so when the bible talks about darkness it's not always physical darkness like there is no light so for instance in colossians 1 13 it says from verse 12 i'll say it says giving thanks unto the father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who had delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son so we see darkness here is not physical darkness when the bible says god has delivered us from the power of darkness let me read another scripture just one more ephesians 6 12 it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world so they 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 are a class of spirits demonic spirits who they are they call them rulers of darkness when you hear darkness that's where their domain is so when the bible says there was darkness upon the face of the deep it doesn't just mean there was no light but anyways we'll talk about that when we get to probably genesis chapter 3 this is a daily bible study where we take um one chapter of the bible per day as the spirit leads but when we get to genesis chapter 3 we'll discuss what happened between genesis 1 chapter 1 verse 1 and chapter 1 verse 2 and why there was darkness and what god came to do in that situation so moving on this just lets you know that god didn't create the world without form and void and that something actually happened moving on to verse 3 the bible says and god said let there be light so god came and saw an issue the issue is there is darkness the issue is there's water everywhere the earth is shapeless the earth is formless right and when god wanted to provide a solution to that problem he began to speak he began to speak and what did he speak he spoke the word the bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god it goes on to say that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made it says in him was life and the life was the light of men so when god was speaking god wanted to solve issues and he spoke what the word he spoke what the word the bible now goes on to say that when god created man he created him in his image and in his likeness so the way we function is the same way god functions so when we have issues in our life we also have to speak the word so even the the biggest issue anybody can have in life is a lack of salvation or not knowing god and for that issue to be solved you have to speak the bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the lord jesus so when you want to solve the problem of salve, no salvation or sin you have to actually confess that jesus is lord so you have to speak the word you can't just believe it you can't just have it in your head so when you speak right you saw how there was darkness in the earth and when god spoke light appeared the bible also says jesus is the light of life he's the light of the world so when a man is in darkness or in sin or a slave to satan for that light to appear in his life he too has to speak he has to speak that life he has to confess that jesus is lord 
The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and that God had raised him from the dead, ye shall be saved. So in the same way that God spoke over a situation that was not palatable, that's how we too speak over situations. So nowadays there is this um, corruption of this, this speaking reality. Where some people now, it has now become an argument in the body of Christ whether we can speak, whether we should not speak, whether our words have creative power, whether it doesn't have creative power. That's one corruption. Then there's another one where they now call it, I think they call it words of affirmation or I don't know what they call it. Was it positive affirmations or things where people just wake up? You see all these things on like Instagram. Someone will just put a post and say, say these things every day. So I'll have a good life. My life is happy. My life is prosperous. So people just get up and i mean those words are very powerless words honestly if you just wake up and you're just saying i will prosper i will have a good life to do be good those things are powerless if they are not based on the word of god you can't just get up and just say anything just like because god didn't just say anything he spoke the word so we as christians have creative power that we can shape our lives but you can't just get up and just say anything because it sounds good or it sounds cute or it sounds nice you have to speak the word so you have marital challenges you have to find out what does the word say about people who are looking to get married it says none shall want her mate so when you get up in the morning you look for that scripture or you speak based on that scripture you don't have to say it exactly as it says it but behind your words, you're not just, and for a non-believer or someone who doesn't know God, he just gets up and saying, I'll be married, I'll be married. That's just English. Because Satan doesn't hear English. Even Jesus said it is written. So for someone to just get up who doesn't know Jesus and just say, I'll be married, I'll be married, based on, I don't know what the person is speaking. He's just wasting his time. Nothing will happen because Jesus said it is written. So for we as believers, we don't just pick things that people post on Instagram or people's WhatsApp status and just be saying that, oh, these are positive words. That's nonsense. Behind those words, you have to have a revelation of what the word of God says. Because situations only respond, they don't respond to English. They respond to spirit and life. So you don't have to say it exactly as the word, but behind your speaking, you know the word of God says, none shall want her mate. So when you're saying, I receive my husband, I receive my wife, it is based on an understanding of what God's word says. It's not just empty words. So you have financial issues. What does the Bible say about finances? Right, things are hard in the world right now. Almost anywhere you go, there's 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 an, there are issues. So, what does the Bible say about when there is famine in the land? What is the portion of the righteous when there's not enough to just know that God wants us? To, it's not just knowing God wants us to prosper. You must know what the Word of God says. Jesus said it is written. So you must know when there is a famine. What does the Bible say? For instance, in Psalm thirty-seven, it says, "In the days of the famine, they shall be satisfied." So if I get up and say my case is different, it's not just because I heard my pastor say it. I am, I am speaking the word. And because I'm speaking the word, it has power. So somebody is sick. You are not just hoping God will heal you. No, you have actually searched the scriptures. So this is what the word of God says about healing. This is what the word of God says about healing. It says, I will bless your bread and your water. And I will take away sickness and disease from you. So when I get up and say I am healed, there is a revelation. There is a revelation that is sponsoring that speaking. We are not just, you don't just speak empty words. So you must find out for every challenge in your life, there is something the word of God says, be in marriage, be it childbearing, be it looking for a house, be it a job, any, there is nothing you can face in life that the word of God does not cover. So you find the word, you speak it, right? And as God spoke it, you too will see things change. So moving on. We see how God wanted to create the animal. So he created the animals on the sixth day. But there was a difference in even the way when he first wanted to create the first set of animals. Look at what he said. Genesis 1.20 And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl that may fly above the heaven sorry that might fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven and god created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly so the bible says when god wanted to create the first set of animals he said let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life 
Then the Bible now says that, and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly. Is the first set of animals. God spoke to the waters, and those animals came out from the water. Then, in verse 24, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. So the first sort of animals God created, he spoke to the waters. And those animals include the fowls of the air. So the birds actually came out from the water and they began to fly in the air. Now when he wanted to create the second set of animals, he spoke to the land. And those animals, the land brought forth, the Bible says, the beast of the field and every creeping thing that moved upon the earth and the cattle and whatever. The reason I'm bringing this up is because <laughs> science has told here science has told human beings that they are actually animals. So when you take the scientific worldview, it calls you a higher animal. Maybe you you are an animal, though, but me I am not an animal. That's what people believe that we are animals. We are the same, and we are we are just higher. But that's not what the Bible teaches. When God was creating the animals, he spoke. He spoke to the waters. The waters brought forth some animals. He spoke to the land. The land brought forth some animals. But when he wanted to create man, he didn't speak. He took the dust. He used his hand. He took the dust and he molded it. It's completely different. You're not an animal. No matter what any, any scientific textbook tells you, unless you believe science more than you believe the word of God. So when he created the animal, he just spoke and the animals just came alive. But the God with man, he molded him and then he breathed into him the breath of life. He didn't do that with any animal. He did not. He did not. When he was making man, he said, let us make man in our image. He never said, let me create some animals in our image. He never said that. So there's a completely, in fact, when you're even reading the bible the bible even makes it very clear that animals are not human beings so it, it even among the animals it doesn't just call the animals it categorizes them you have the beast of the field you have the cattle you have the fowls of the air you have the fish of the sea then you have every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so the fowls of the air are basically eagles and every other bird that flies the fish of the sea are obvious. You know what fish is. The cattle, you know what cattle is. It's obvious. The beasts of the field are like lions, tigers, hippopotamus, rhinoceros, giraffes, zebras, and everything. Then he says every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Those are like lizards, earthworms. So basically animals that their stomach is near the floor. They creep upon the earth like rats, moles, caterpillars. That's what the Bible calls creeping things. So even the animals are, they are completely different from human beings. So the reason I'm saying this, we need to understand that the, we, we, we take the word of God above what man says. Not, we don't just take everything because we were taught it in school or because some scientists somewhere said that you are, you are an animal. You're not an animal. Animals cannot have the presence of God in them. So Animals don't have the Holy Spirit. Animals don't have God's glory. You are not an animal. The Bible never calls man a beast. Do you know who is called a beast? Is an antichrist. Is the antichrist who is called a beast? So it's an antichrist spirit that wants to reduce man to animals. It's an antichrist spirit. So when you even check all these human beings, animal, you you can see how far people are now stretching this thing. So I was in a room the other day, and they were talking about. Um, homosex homosexualism and why is okay for human beings to for like a man to go and sleep with another man then somebody now got up and said you know that where our cousins and ch are chimpanzees and gorillas and some gorillas some male gorillas actually sleep with female gorillas and some male animals sleep with female animals so i was trying to explain to them that you are not an animal that you are made in the image of god so i was trying to explain that see the difference God spoke when he was creating animals. With man, he used his hand. He breathed the breath of life into man. He didn't breathe into animals. He said, let 
man, let's make man in our image. He didn't say that for animals, but they were not Christians, so they didn't get what I they didn't understand what I was trying to say. So I just had to leave them. So people now think it's okay for a man to sleep with a man because animals are sleeping with each other and they think we are related to animals. So when you when you think that human beings, you need to understand how unbelievers think, how atheists think, how people in the world think. If you think that your cousin, your sister, your neighbor, or even yourself, you are just you are very close to a chimpanzee, then it's easy to kill another person. Because the reason God says we should not kill, He says we should not kill man. He says for man was made in His image. But if you believe the person next door is just very close to a chimpanzee, you can actually carry a gun, enter a supermarket, and shoot everybody. Because I mean, we are all we are all animals. We are all animals. So this is the the is easy to strap a bomb on your waist and just enter somewhere and just blow everybody up. This is how unbelievers think, truly speaking, because it's only in Christianity that we see that we are made in the image of God. We are not like the rest of creation. So the reason you are angry when somebody dies is because you don't have to know the person. You just hear there was an earthquake and you are sad. Do you know why? Because those people are your brother. They are, they are technically speaking, God, they are part of your brothers. All of us are made in the image of God. But if you hear that a cow died, it doesn't concern you that much. It's just an animal. So you can see how people don't even care about each other because what science teaches them is that all of us are animals. We are just higher animals. So that care, that love, the world is so cold. People are so selfish. It's just you're just like, where is all this going? Where is it going? And the reason, another reason I'm bringing this up is you can see that science has started to take a different view from the Bible, little by little. So first of all, and Christians are believing it. So first of all, we are not animals, but science is we're animals. The Bible says that a, a man shall not lie with a man as with a woman. It is an abomination before the Lord. In other words, we, men don't sleep with men. Women don't sleep with women. But scientifically, there's nothing wrong with it. They will even show you how our cousin, who were apes and chimpanzees and whatever, whatever, slept with each other. The Bible says that God created man. Science says there is no God that we came from chimpanzees. I don't know how possible it is for something that was not made in the image of God to evolve into something that was made in the image of God. I don't know how they, how they understand it, but that's their business. The Bible says a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So it's man and woman. The Bible says male and female created them, two genders. But now, scientifically, there are like 50 genders. 50. Male, woman, transgender, you, I don't even know. I mean, like, what's all this? What's where is this? The Bible says male and female created he them, but now scientifically, there are I don't know how many. When we study the Bible, life begins at conception. Once is once this the sperm enters the egg, a baby is created. But scientifically, you can kill a, a three-month-old baby, and nothing is wrong with it. So you can see how little by little. Science is pushing people, at least demonic science, not general science, because general science, I mean, things like technology, which are not bad, and I mean, healthcare, and general, generally speaking, right, it's not an issue. But you can see how little by little, some parts have begun to divulge. So we as Christians, our standard, our authority is the word of God. We don't... We don't look to any other thing that is not the word of God. We take the word of God, we defend it, we believe it more than any other thing. You can see how, I mean, if you, even if you, you can even go among normal Christians and some people say, oh, this part of the Bible is not for us, this one is Old Testament. It's the strategy of the devil where he's attacking the scripture one by one he's pulling out parts of it pulling out parts of it he will take one part people say oh this one is not for us they take another part before you know it the whole scripture they've ripped it to straight and all these kind of things can be happening so i think we can stop here for today thank you everyone for